Hello everyone! Kamusta kayong lahat? My name is Miko Atchenza and I'd love to share the word to you guys today here in our youth service. Welcome everyone! Kamusta kayo? Kaya pa ba? I know that's the title of our series that we are in right now pero honestly, pag tinanong ka ng tanong na kaya pa ba? Anong sasagot mo? And alam mo, pag yung question na yun, there's just something about that question that makes you really check on yourself. Kamusta nga ba talaga ako? Alam yun yung ang saya-saya naman ng araw mo, tapos bigla may tumapik sa likod mo. Bro, kaya pa ba? Kaya pa ba best? Ano ba tawag sa iyo ng classmate mo? Kaya pa ba B? Tapos sasagot ka ng, okay lang B, kaya pa B. Ayan, di ba? But there, seriously, there's something about that question that makes you assess whether you are still doing good. You can still keep going. And alam mo yun, talaga napapaisip ka, kaya ko pa ba talaga? Okay pa ba talaga ako? And because I'm concerned about you, let me ask you that question. If you would be brutally honest with yourself right now, kaya pa ba talaga? Ayan, napacheck na tayo ng sarili natin. One thing that I am happy about is the fact that you are here today. Nandito ka sa youth service natin. Lumalaban ka. At talagang yung like burst mo, tsaka yung attendance mo dito, it's a sign that you are still fighting. Laban. Okay? So, um, just to check, no? Whatever you're going through today, if you are frustrated, you are disappointed in one way or the other, perhaps may nakuha kang, alam mo yung disappointment or frustrations from your family. There is a, a feeling of hopelessness pagdating sa academics or, alam mo yun, di mo na malaman, abos na yung pera mo, abos na yung allowance mo, eh, wala nung baon. Whatever you're going through today, if you are telling me na, Kuya Miko, eto ako, lumalaban pa, kaya pa, kakayanin pa. Comment ka sa comment section natin down below and just type in KAYA PA All caps para intense KAYA PA Let me know that you are still fighting Let me know that you are here in the youth service You're ready to hear the word of God And you're saying KAYA PA Okay? So, habang nagko-comment kayo Simulan na natin to, no? Simulan na natin to Let's start by answering this question today Have you ever resolved into not doing something ever again? That is the question. Nasabi mo na ba yung mga katagang, never ko na talagang uulitin to? Nakapag-post ka na ba sa Facebook nung hashtag never again? Ayan. So, ano ba example nan? Hashtag never again akong mafafall sa maling tao, sa maling pagkakataon. Yon, dami nakaka-relate. Uy, may nagsasad burst. Pakitingnan kung sino yan. Ayan. So, mamaya, kausapin natin yan. Never again akong magsasawsaw ng fishball sa hugasan ng sandokiyak. Na-experience nyo na ba yon? Never again ako mag-send ng memes dun sa GC namin sa school na nandun pala yung prof ko. Ayan. I don't know. Ano yung never again mo? Ano yung resolution mo na I will never do this again? Okay? You know what? Nagpa-survey ako sa Facebook about sa never again ng mga tao and uh, I've received some answers. Share ko lang sa inyo yung ilan sa mga friends natin na sumagot. Unang-una na dyan, si Charlene Gonzales, hindi po yung artista, kundi po yung Miss Universe ng Victory Calamba, hashtag never again. Ako magyayaya, tapos ako mismo yung wala ang sagot niya. Naklasan niyo na ba yun? May tropa kang niyakag ka, jogging tayo, tapos alam mo yun, nandun ka na sa plaza ng 7am, tapos wala siya. It's a drawing. Ayan. Never again do that. Number two, Lena Marie Prila, sabi niya, never again matutulog ng 2am pag Friday para hindi ma-miss ang pagninilay. Shoutout sa mga regular attendees natin ng pagninilay, ayan. At pag naminis ang pagninilay, alam na, nagpuyat ng Friday night. Pangatlo, si Carl, sabi niya, si Carl na lagi nagko-comment at laging sumasali sa mga games natin sa youth survey, sabi niya, hashtag never again iinom ng is... Ano daw? Iinom sa isang araw ng almost 10 cups ng tea, sobrang nakakahilo. Carl, bakit mo gagawin yon 10 cups ng tea? Sobrang ng... Favorite mo naman ng tea. Ayan, don't ever do that again. I don't know kung nangyari sa chan mo that time. At syempre, pumili ako ng isang comment na mananalo ng 100 peso na load. Ayan, yay! So, kung comment mo to, PM mo ko mamaya. I will also send you a message for you to claim that load. Ito yung comment niya. Hashtag never again, hahalik ng aso pag nag-growl na. Walang iba kundi ang nag-comment nito ay si Ice, si Christian, si Dayao. Chat kita after ng message na to. Bibigyan kita ng load pampalubag loob kasi siguro ang dayo mo nagastos sa Animal Bite Center noong time na yon Okay? But anyway, 
Why do we have such taglines? Why do we have resolves like this? Why do we have never again? Bakit tayo relatable dun sa ilan natin na binasa kanina? Okay? Bakit nga ba? These never again moments are usually associated by the things that we have learned in the past. Perhaps in the past nasaktan ka, may nawala sa'yo, napahiya ka, may nangyari hindi maganda sa'yo. And because you don't want those things to happen again, nagkaroon ka ng mga resolution na never again kung gagawin to so as not to experience the same hurt, the same pain, the same loss ever again. That's why we have these resolves about things that we don't want to do ever again. Okay? You see, in our walk with God, we have also made some never again decisions before. When we have decided to pursue God, we have decided to never again trust in our own good works for salvation. When we have decided to live our lives for the purposes of God, we have decided to never again live in sin. Okay? And ito yung mga magiging kaya pa ba questions na ipaponder natin this afternoon. Kaya pa ba when it comes to just trusting on God's grace alone and not going back to trusting our self-effort? Kaya pa ba when it comes to living a life that is honoring to God and not going back to a life of sin? That is our topic for this afternoon as we talk about no turning back as we read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 to 30. We will see the admonition of the author of Hebrews for us not to turn back to the former lives that we once have and really be strong and firm to the new life that we now have in Jesus Christ. If you would be able to really read with me, kindly go and get your Bible, Hebrews 10, 26-30. Let's read that all together. Are you ready? Ready na ba yung mga Bible mo? Basahin natin. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he, has, he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? Let's just open this with a word of prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are speaking to us this afternoon, your Holy Spirit is moving in our hearts. You are pointing something at us and you want us to be reminded of the life that we are living in you. Thank you, God. Uh, my prayer, God, is that you open up our hearts and our eyes so that we will be able to really be touched by you. We will be able to really see you, Lord God, and listen to you this afternoon on what you have to say. And I pray, God, that you allow the, your word penetrate, Lord God, deep within us, that it would be able to change us this afternoon. And I thank you, Lord God, for I know, Lord, that you have something in store for each and every one of us in this live stream listening to this. Lord, encounter us. Lord, really transform us to what you want us to become after this message. And really, at the end of this, may you be honored May we know more of your love. May we understand more of your purposes for our lives as we dedicate this time to really seeking you and knowing more of you. Thank you, God. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to give you a bit of a background about the text that we have just read, it is being directed to the Jewish believers that time na nakakilala kay Jesus, na encounter nila yung good news of salvation, Yet, because of the pressures na na-encounter nila sa mundo, because of the persecution, the imprisonment na na-experience nila, they turned their back on God. Usually, when someone encounter the good news of salvation, they do two things. Yung sinabi natin kanina. First is they stop trusting in their good works for salvation. And second is they stop living a life of sin. These people, despite knowing Jesus, despite encountering the good news, what happened was they turned their back on God. They went back to their old ways of living. They turned back, okay? Hindi totoo sa kanila yung title ng message natin ngayon na no turning back, okay? I don't know for it was not written in the text, but perhaps these Jewish believers, perhaps seryoso naman sila at the beginning of their walk with God, yet na encounter nila yung pressures, talagang nag-give up sila. 
And uh, you know, even in our resolve to not do something ever again, sometimes we fail. Sometimes yung hashtag never again moments natin nagiging hashtag repeated again moments. Hashtag di na natuto moments. For example, a person decided never again to eat samgyo kasi nakakataba. Yet because all of his friends or alam mo yun, into some group, nung nagyakag yung friends niya, na tara, some group, eh siya, ayaw niyang ma-miss out yung bonding no, with his friends. Talagang naging marupok tong taong to. At talagang, okay, sige, some group na ulit for the sake of friendship. And that never again moment become, became a repeated again moment. Alam mo yun, tinanong siya ng tropa, oh, kala ko ba never again some group? Ang sabi na lang niya ay, it's a prank! Ganun na lang kasi, wala eh. na ulit na naman, walang magagawa. Perhaps that person, he didn't foresee that he lives in an environment na talagang yung mga kaibigan niya mahilig magsamgyo at kung ayaw niya ma-miss out, kailangan lagi siyang sumama. He is easily influenced by his friends for he did not foresee this happening. Okay? You see, uh, that is the reason why we sometimes find ourselves doing the things we told ourselves we will not do ever again. Sometimes we fail to factor in every possibility that will persuade us and prove our convictions to be weak. Marupok pala yung never again moment natin, yung never again decision natin, madali pa lang matagtag, okay? But who is to blame? Can someone really factor in every possibility for you to be tempted to go back to that thing that you have decided not to do ever again? Meron bang kaya? Another reason that I see why we fail at times in keeping our never again convictions is sometimes we fail to uh, accurately estimate the cost of the change that we want to happen in our lives. You see, the only way that a change can happen is if the pain of staying in the state that you are in is greater than the pain of change. That's the only thing or the only way a change can truly happen when you realize that the cost of change is worth it. In line with that, we are also experiencing hurdles when following God. Our convictions, they are always being tested. The things that we have turned our backs from, they also always haunts us in social media, With the people that we are surrounded with, in the environment that we are in, talagang ang dami nagtatempt sa atin na bumalik dun sa old sinful life natin in the past. Let us just do a short moment of introspection right now. Would you say that the passion that you have right now to live your life for God is at the same degree of your passion back then, the first time you have encountered God? Remember your victory weekend. Remember that preaching na talagang na-encounter mo si God through the word. Remember that conference that you have attended. Remember those moments na sobrang taas lang nung desire mo to live for God. Sobrang taas lang nung passion mo to really live a life that is honoring to Him. Can you say that your passion to live according to God's purpose right now is at that same degree as those moments? Perhaps you are returning to trusting in your good works in order for you to really have a secured future. Alam natin that by grace we are saved and our eternity is secured in Jesus Christ. But you're starting to think about how about my future? What can I do about it? Before you are so convinced that despite your circumstances that you are in, God can secure your future. God can fulfill the purposes that He has For you, But now, being faced with your limitations, the reality of your circumstances, your inadequacy, you start to lose faith and get back to the thinking that if you won't do anything, if you won't strive, you will not have a good future. You will not have alam mo yun, uh, a security in your life. You started to go back to the treadmill of performance, really striving, really working hard to earn the good things in life only to end up in frustration and disappointment because you realize that you can never do enough. Perhaps you're that person. Perhaps you are that person and you find yourself returning to a life of sin. Before you are so passionate to live your life 
set apart for God's purposes. You want to live a life honoring to Him. That's why you turned away from all known sins in your life. You decided that never again will you live a life of sin. Yet, you are being tempted again by the same sins that you've done before. You are being pressured by the environment that you live in to go back to sinning. And when you tried and sinned again, you experienced that temporary satisfaction that sin gives and you started craving again for it, but only to find out that you're becoming more dissatisfied and your, alam mo yun, your needs are not really being met and you end up in frustration once again. Perhaps you, perhaps you find yourself returning to hopelessness. It is becoming impossible for you to live this kind of life. The world that we live in tells us to go on sinning, tells us to really strive hard, to really do something about ourselves. But you know that this is not the life that Christ wants you to live. More importantly, this is not the life that God has prepared for you. Yet you are being frustrated with the thought that it is becoming impossible to live this Christian life. These reasons make it hard for you to stand up for your convictions and to really say that there is no turning back. Today, we will look at the text that we have read earlier and uh, it was described there what it looks like for someone to turn away from God. We are actually given three pictures for us to better understand what it means to turn away from God. Number one on that list is outraging the spirit of grace. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Alam natin, pag sinabing grace, it is unmerited favor. It is something good that you don't deserve yet is being given to you anyway. That is grace. And to go back to a life of striving and trusting on what your good works can produce, it is what it is said here. It is outraging the spirit of grace. Pag sinabing outrageous, it's shockingly bad. Alam nyo, picture it like this para mas madali natin maintindihan. For example, uh, someone came up to you saying, a man came up to you saying, uh, I will give you full scholarship in college. Your four years or five years of schooling, I will pay for that. Not only that, you will have book and travel allowance. You will have a 5,000 pesos stipend per month. How many of you, you want that? And you know that it is grace. This man doesn't ask anything in return, but he just wants to give that to you. We don't deserve that, but it's the intention of the man to give it to us. That is grace. And to reject and refuse that gift that man is offering, that is just outrageous. Not something na, alam yun, why would you reject that? It's outrageous. And this is exactly how it looks like when we think that we will cultivate or alam yun, conjure a good life out of our own good effort and not trust on the grace of God in our lives because His grace is more than enough to secure even our life here on earth, okay? So this is my ask to all of us. Do not turn. Do not turn back to your life of miserably trying to prove anything by doing things your own way only to end up in frustration. God's grace is sufficient not just to save you but to also secure you for a life of abundance, to sustain you, to enrich you in this life that He has given you. Second in our pictures is profaning the blood of the covenant, still in that text. Now, the blood of the covenant, it just simply talks about the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has done to bring us salvation. It talks about the power in His blood that made us now righteous and holy before God, okay? And to go back to a life of sin, knowing that we are righteous, that we are holy, is profanity according to this scripture. Ano yung profanity? Ito yung, uh, sa mga nagpong mga legends dito, pag may hinang trash talk sa'yo, tapos may nura ka, that is profanity. You can report those players. And that's what it looks like. It's making fun of you. It's uh, really lambasting you, blaspheming you. And it's the same picture. Whenever we go back to sin, to a life of wickedness and doing evil things, now that we are righteous, it's like making fun. Oh, but 
Jesus Christ has done, of the sacrifice of God through Jesus on the cross. Kapag daw bumalik tayo into sin, we are blaspheming the blood of Jesus. Okay? Do not turn back to your life of satisfying yourself through the temporary things that sin can provide to you. God's mercy has made you righteous. He has made you holy. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross has saved you and forgiven you of all your sins. Lastly, on this list of pictures in this text that we have read, which I think is the most serious and most important, is this. Trampling underfoot the Son of God. Anong ibig sabihin nun? It is ascribing the Lord Jesus Christ as nothing to you. Okay? It is saying that Jesus Christ's life, death, resurrection, ministry are of no worth to you. Bakit ganun yung ibig sabihin nun? Let me explain. The book of Hebrews, it is written with the theme of presenting Jesus Christ as the supreme one. The one who is greater in everything else. The one who is above anything or anyone in this world. Yun yung theme ng Hebrews, to present Jesus Christ that way. Introduction pa lang ng Hebrews, makikita na natin yan. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, babasahin ko to. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things. Through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the power of his by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is being presented as the greater one. He is being presented here on this verse I've read as the greater revelation of God of who he is to mankind. Not only that, kung babasahin mo yung buong book of Hebrews, Jesus is presented as the greater messenger than the angels, the greater deliverer than Moses, the greater high priest than the temple priest and even Melchizedek, and lastly, the greater sacrifice for sin than the lamb offering, which brought about the greater covenant than the old covenant. This may all sound theological to you, I know, but the point of the book of Hebrews is this. Jesus is greater than anything in this world. That's the point. That is why turning back to a life of sin, to a life of trusting in your good works, to live your life, after knowing Jesus Christ, who He is, what He has done, it's tantamount to saying that He is nothing to you. Now that you have found something greater, why would you turn your back on Him? Why would you turn back to the life that is lesser than the life that is being, that is being presented to you right now? That's why it's as if you're seeing Jesus Christ as nothing when you turn your back on God. Let me present to you what I believe though. I think... The problem is that our tendency is to forget and be distracted. Ano ibig sabihin nun? We are so easily being distracted by the world that we live in and the problems that we encounter in it. Have you heard about the, the principle of the expulsive power of a new affection? Have you heard about that? The principle is basically saying that in order for a desire in your heart to be totally removed, you must be introduced to a desire that is greater than it. Okay? Kaya expulsive. It really, ano, chases away. It really replaces. Okay? For example, you are deciding for a school with which you will be going to for college, and in the beginning, talaga sold out ka na yung UP, yung best campus na pwede mong pasukan for your college life. Yet, you have met someone who has persuaded you and has made you believe that PUP is the better campus. At PUP, you have this, you have that, you will experience this, you will experience that, at UP, you won't. And you started believing in that. And your desire to go to UP started being ex expelled, being replaced, but by the desire to go to PUP instead. 
That's the example of the expulsive power of a new affection. You see, this is what Jesus has done and what He is doing in our lives. He didn't just came to give us eternal life, but He gave His life to show us a better way of living. That is His promise, to give us life to the full. A life that is so much better than the life that, 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 the life that we once have, than the life that we will have if we will turn back to our former way of doing things. His thoughts are greater. His ways are higher. Everything that He has prepared for us is better. And I believe, as we constantly remember that, as we constantly uh, allow ourselves to be refocused on the great thing, greater things that Christ has in store for us in this life that He has given us, there is no way that we will turn back. There is no way that we will turn away from God and go back to our former lives. Okay? The thing is, if we find ourselves turning back to sin, if we find ourselves really not as passionate for God as we were once before, if we find ourselves really trusting in our good works again, and we can really trust God's grace fully anymore, it is most certain that it is us who moved and not God. Try to look back at your journey. When have you made a turn? Kailan ka kumaliwa? Kailan ka kumanan? What made you distracted? What took your eyes away from being captiv captivated from the God who is greater? And just start to reevaluate. Ito yung ask ko na gawin natin today. All of us. You guys are the woke generation. You really think critically. You really uh, doubt everything before believing anything. I want you to be woke about sin. Really be in the state of reconsideration. The pleasure of sin will only last for a temporary moment. But the satisfaction and the pleasure that is brought about by Jesus in your life, it is eternal and it will lead you to an abundant life. Be woke as well about your good works. Your good works can only take you as far as what you deserve in this life. And that fails trem tremendously in comparison to the purposes that God has prepared for us to live in. Start assessing once again the greater things that Jesus is offering you. And let that expel any sinful desires, any selfish ways that we are finding in ourselves as being birthed as we are getting distracted by this world. Start assessing again the beauty of Jesus Christ. Start really believing again and being captivated again by the life that He has prepared for us to live, that He has called us to live in. Nothing is greater than Him. Nothing else compares to His great love. And as we do so, as we refocus our mind and really have a good assessment, that Jesus is greater, we will be captivated once again. And then and only then can we make a solid conviction that truly there is no turning back. Okay? Let me end with this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I am so encouraged by this verse. I know that you will be too. Sabi dito, But as it is written, What no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him. I want you to be expectant of what God will do in your life and where this journey with Him will take you as to you continue to make that decision to not turn back to sin, to not trust on your good works and trust Him alone for salvation and even every little detail in your life. May our kaya pa ba turn into kaya pa as we Make that decision today to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who is greater than anything and everything that this world can offer. And may this always get us back into a deep appreciation of the beauty of Jesus Christ and everything that He has done for us on the cross. Let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for that reminder. Thank you for getting us back, Lord God, to the appreciation of the life that you have called us to live, that you have purchased on the cross. We were bought at a price. And thank you, God, for 
what you have for us is so much better than whatever this world has to offer. And I pray for the people that is being distracted by this world, for your sons and daughters who are being sidetracked by the worries, Lord God, brought about by this pandemic or whatever uh, problems that they have in their lives. I pray, Lord God, that you may reveal your beauty once again to them, that you may reveal to them once again what a great life you have prepared in store for them. Salamat Panginoon, I pray Lord that today we would be able to make that decision to really acknowledge once again that you are greater than anything in this world and that in you everything that we have Lord God are secure. Everything Lord God that we need are secured and we can really have a life to the full in you alone. Salamat Panginoon. This is the reason why we can turn our back from sin, why we can make that decision to not go back into our former lives and trust you alone and trust in your grace alone for our lives. Salamat Panginoon. Uh, bless each student, each person watching this live stream today. Bless them, keep them, protect them, Lord God, and continue to make them in awe every day of the things you have prepared for them. Salamat o Diyos. We are excited for this life that you have called us to live. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Stay on this live stream as we continue to pray this afternoon.